In this video, we'll just take a quick comparison between fluid particles and uh, fluid simulation. So here's a simulated fluid from Blender using domain, and this was have an inflow object, and this is an obstacle here. And this uh, blue glass bowl was basically from a plane, and I just extruded the edges up using uh, proportional editing. But you can see it does have some issues down here at the base where the fluid's seeping through, and the bowl. One of the best ways to do this is to put a subsurface modifier on here, and that wasn't enough for this shape of this object to prevent the fluid from going through. And this was set with the resolution of 225 on the for the simulation, and that took maybe an hour and a half just to run the simulation itself, and it took most of the evening just to create the animation. All right, so that's one way. And for those of you who have followed my video, that I prefer to work with more real-time animation, so something that takes half a day just doesn't cut it for me. So let's see what else Blender offers as an option. All right, so let's take a quick look at this other video. This is an animation that I've posted before. Now this is obviously not the same thing, but this is these are particles within Blender using the option of uh, fluids, whereas they're normally set to no Newtonian, but I picked fluids, and it does a pretty nice job. And then you have to choose your own style of rendering to go with it. It's obviously not going to provide the same effect, but the motion's pretty nice. And this was a fraction of the time to generate this animation compared to the other one. So for me, this works pretty well. And then let's go look at Blender. Now in this scene in here, well, let's go look at the uh, particle system real quick. Let's go grab just any object. There's, oh, there's an object back there. And we'll go look at a in there in the particles. I was to give that a particle system down here. Normally it's set to Newtonian by default and then you can set that fluid object and, and that's the particles that I'd set. And so you have all kinds of variations and we're going to be focusing on the fluids a lot more often. In fact you don't even need to use the fluids per se. You can just use particles because in for instance in this scene here that I posted an animation with the water coming through here with the fluid simulation. Now instead, let me run this and we'll see what the difference is. Now this is just a regular particle system. These aren't even fluid particles in here. And they're following down this channel. And then you can simulate a kind of, well they're doing that little bouncing effect. I don't know why they're doing that right now. They don't usually do that. Let me see if I can stop that. Start from the beginning. Start, start again. Well, I'm, I'm sure I can fix it, but still you can simulate a fluid movement even with that by itself. And this is unlike before where we've looked at the video with curve guides where you can make specific curves and make it work, or with keyed particles where we go between the two. In this case, everything's directed by based upon your geometry of your model. And the, the factor that makes it work, though, the best is you make, making sure you have nice, clean surfaces, you know, for these things to bounce off of in order to make it work. So we'll be focusing mostly on fluid particle simulations for a lot of the fu future animations because then I can combine them with other real-time elements and can have a lot more fun because I just don't have the time to wait around overnight to make one little animation, fluid animation or something like that. So that's what's coming up down the pipeline. All right, well, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next video.